So this video will be about how to get to EWA constellations and how to uh, basically get set up on the server. Uh, here you can see I just uh, after the character creator creation screen you end up in the market and then you type slash kit for your basic tools weapons and armor and this is the market showing you all the portals and then above every <coughs> every location where you can teleport to there is a statue, so in the beginning you'll have to read the texts on the wall to see where you're actually going. But uh, eventually you will just recognize these uh, symbols above it, by these statues, and you, you, you will just uh, run in there without even thinking about it, because you just recognize where you go. Like this F3 there, you, you just saw that's <clears throat> um, that's the new after the new update you will see it now here in the faction hall it's been moved to a new location but I'm just showing this to people who have no experience with the mods at all so so when you when you have created your character the first thing you should do is come here to the right uh, and choose a profession. I recommend uh, choosing the forestry guild first. And then afterwards, when you have acquired some pippi gold, you can uh, buy these other guild tokens from the market. There are basically two potions. The one that I'm showing now is uh, to learn all factions and sub-factions. And then the yellow potion is the one to unlearn it. So in the beginning you don't have to worry about completing any quests or anything like this. You simply uh, unlock everything to get going fast after a wipe and then later on when you settled in and you have more time you can uh, you can unlearn your factions and sub factions and do the quests as you uh, as you see fit these potions are unlimited so so yeah, that's basically the first thing you want to do, create a character, explore the market, do slash kit for your tools, and then um, get your uh, your guild token, uh, yeah, your, your profession token, to start making packages. You will also see like sand ruins. There's normally no obelisk there. Um, and you can see here I I ran in too fast into the teleporter and I ended up on the other side. So always take your time to slow down and to walk into these portals because they are faster than the server can load in the uh, the building pieces where you where you arrive. So in the kit is basically uh, enough building pieces to to make a really strong starter base, and you will see here how much building pieces you have to put down to to get that the best buck for your money if you know what I what I mean so 
it's basically three three layers of foundations. And then here you see a picture. If you put your elevator on the outside like that, you don't have any doors that can be directly entered. So once you've set up your starter base, you basically want to chop some wood to get some levels in and use the pickaxe so you get branches, resin, bark and wood. And then the next thing you want to do is build an outpost at a named city or basically anywhere where there are fangles. Because there are kits added to the Vangles and they will drop the best AOC armor and weapons. And here again this basic picture of the of the outpost. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in god mode and I have my strength popped up so you don't have to look at me fire killing Vangles for 10 minutes in straight. But you see they drop they drop entire pieces of armor and the, the best weapons for the for the Vangle faction. So once you've collected a complete set of uh, strength armor from the Vangles, you equip that, and then if you you have your your weapon of choice, I really like the Vanquished Cleaver, and then because you in your starter kit is 150 PP gold, you come to this uh, vendor here for useful things. And there you buy the blacksmith sharpening tool sets. This will uh, increase the damage and armor penetration of your weapon. It's the best kit available in the mods that is balanced. So, yeah, I can't equip it because the weapon is damaged, but you get the point. And then the next thing you should do is go to the unnamed city, come to the map room here and unlock a uh, cartographer. So once you've cartographer, you have to go to the volcano to the obelisks every time you teleport somewhere because once you have a base set up with a map room in it you will be able to teleport from the inside of your base directly to an obelisk and again this this is all for people who have no experience at all with the mods and this speed up run that I'm showing is will be it will be possible for them to see exactly where they have to go, where to climb, and all these things. So, also when you're climbing, hold down your space bar. I don't think this recipe is necessarily needed for the EWA content, but if you're here, you might as well just uh, grab it. Otherwise, you have to come back for it.
just showing you where you have to go. You can also, not in this case, but a lot of cases you will, you can just see top right corner of your screen. There's a mini map, so you can always zoom in on the map if you get lost or sidetracked. Uh, This recipe, I know 100% sure you have to get its uh, obsidian tools. Yeah, and then this is where you have where you actually get, came back down so then the next thing you do is go to the to the black keep and then you basically when facing the pillar go to the left and run over this big uh, this big ice sheets to the perilous valley I also added a kit, so fragments of power and handheld Ymir totems drop from NPCs all around on the map. But these NPCs here, they have it standard in their inventory. So getting those 20, those first 25 handheld Ymir totems is the fastest way if you do it here, if you farm these uh, living on that uh, and then basically the, f the the first EWA recipe that you need to get that is not uh, vanilla is star obsidian arsenal you see top right there you need 25 of these handheld Ymir totems And then one extra feat you need is Exile's Epics to unlock the EWA armors or at least the Tech Tree Obsidian tools. And I would also recommend uh, unlocking Star Metal tools. And then as you exit the Perilous Valley, you facing it, you turn to the left and you run to this river here. I will show you on the map now. So you basically run down that river all the way to the end. And then you climb up all the way at the edge there. <coughs> and there you see on the left the cave. It's called the ancient cave. And then this location is discovered and then once you have that you can always look back. And then in this cave are two of these uh, rune stones. One is here, the other one I'll show you later. Yeah, here you can learn the Scourge Steel Arsenal. And then in order to kill the Demon King, you need uh, Scourge Meat. Oh, you can harvest that if you kill one of these uh, dead ogres. But before you go and kill the Demon King, walk out of the dungeon again and place a bedroll in a box outside the dungeon. This way you can uh, you can split up the stack of scourge meat that you have in your inventory because if you die to the demon king and you have killed everything in the dungeon 
you're not able to get back inside and you lose all your gear. So then once that's done, you uh, you go to this uh, door there. Showing you that you need scourge me to get in. And I also noticed that a lot of people, they have a really hard time killing these EWA bosses. So I will show you how to how to do it. Yeah. The the main thing about this is don't don't stress out about it. Yeah. Just chill out. Get a couple of hits in. Let the bleeds do their work. The sunder, the, the basically the debuffs that you have at that moment, and then. Make sure you always run out because when when he does this special, he will, he will one shot you with it. Um, and then these balls that come out, they do damage based on how far you are away from the demon king. So the further away, if if I would I would take the hit now, you see I I run close to him. Because then it doesn't do a lot of damage. But if I would take the hit here, it would take half my HP away. And now I kill him in less than a minute. But if I come here as a regular player without any constellations or anything special like armor or weapons, this fight lasts at least 15 minutes. So. Keep that in mind, yeah, it's it's not just some some NPC that you meet in the desert, yeah. This is this is a really hard boss to kill. Anyways, these uh, these drop rates on these horns and these tentacles that you need to get into the EWA are 2101. The, the sequence can be different, but it basically mean I'm just trying to explain to you that sometimes you will not get a horn or a tentacle. And if you are unlucky like three times in a row, for example, and every time you kill one and somebody has killed it before you, the sequence is interrupted. And if you're really unlucky, you could kill them three times in a row and never get a horn or only get one. So then as soon as you have the horn, you have to consume it like you would eat, uh, you would eat food. This would unlock... Uh, the ancient knowledge and then you can come here to learn uh, scourge the, the breaker sets you see i already learned it but it could be that it's in a slightly different order but you will figure it out it's uh, Then you go back to the Black Keep. Once you have consumed the horn, it's um, you have to start collecting scrim. So here I show you, hold on to the right of the dungeon, just keep holding right. And then eventually you will end up at uh, the daughter of Ymir. So now you have to kill these EWA bosses, preferably the daughter, because her tentacle that you collect when you when you kill her is worth uh, 24 scripts. So it's very uh, it's a high reward.
So what I always do when I'm low level, I jump in the corner here and then I aggro these first three guys and I pull them with me without aggroing the daughter and I kill them here in the corner first so they don't block me when I'm doing circles. And then I uh, attack the daughter and what you basically want to do is stay close to her and rotate cl uh, counterclockwise and then get a hit in make sure you're not in these circles these white circles that appear on the ground and again this this fight even takes longer the first time than the But she, she has very clear tells of what she's going to do. So I can talk to you about this for an hour, but you just have to come here and that die a lot. Uh, we all had to do it in the beginning. Uh, she was really, really difficult in the beginning. Much more deadlier than she is now. But if you, if you just stay calm, you make sure you have enough healing and you, you don't get greedy trying to do as much damage as possible in such a sh in the sh shortest amount of time then um, you, sh you should be fine just pay attention to what she's doing and these uh, these hallucinations they do far less damage than than the daughter itself but if you can avoid getting hit from them yeah it's best to you And this, uh, this red shockwave that she does, that's something that is to counter archers. You could basically cheese her a little bit if you would run in one direction, shoot a few arrows at her, and then run in the other direction. But this shockwave, if you're too far away from her, you, you will, uh, and you are on the move, it, it will one shot you for sure. So always keep an eye on your stamina and something that people also do is they don't look at the left side of their screen. If they get hit, they get a debuff like deep cuts or bleeding and you can't heal until this debuff is over. So the moment you get the debuff, you just have to stay calm and let the timer run out and then you can start healing. But you can see I have, I do, if I hit her, I do 17 to 19,000 damage. But for some reason she has such a huge amount of armor that this is completely mitigated. You see now top left corner I have blood curse, yeah? The moment you have this deep of blood curse when she dies, do not move. Doesn't matter, just don't move until this timer runs out because every step you take, 30% of your HP will be taken away. Alright, so now once you have the tentacles, you basically want to collect five tentacles or other things that sell for scrim to get to 100 scrim. You jump in this portal and then you run back into the perilous v uh, valley and then on the right side here next to the vault is the scream collector. And sh show me your wares. And then you scroll down to the items that you have for sale and simply sell them.
you see you only get 8 scrim for the horn in comparison to the tentacle is uh, 3 times more so and then getting to Hosef the silent legion commander again you can pause it and rewind it if you get lost or whatever but I just speed this up because otherwise the video takes two hours. Here is another tablet on the left in this crystal cave. This is for crystal breaker armor. And then when you come here, always before you ascend, kill these three uh, rock formations because now you are strong. Yeah, you're level 300. But as soon as you ascend, you go back down to level zero. And if one of them are still alive, they will aggro to you. So what I always do is I double jump on top and then I look down to interact with him because other players can come from any direction and kill you. <clears throat> so yeah, make sure you have a hundred scrim. And then ascend. And then you choose one of these. On our server, they work against other players and they are all enabled. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose first because you have to get them all anyways. Otherwise, you won't be competitive against other players. And then here I show you the biggest mistake you can make. Start start fire farming stone and wood in this dungeon. Don't do that. Just run straight out. Run straight out because the bosses and the enemies in uh, the yeah, the NPCs in this dungeon are extremely strong. So you basically hold the right and then you have to look for that small gap in between the rocks. It's, and then once you're outside, you can start farming uh, wood. And then the first thing I always do is you see survival at the bottom. I pump it up to the third skill. So you get uh, double resource gathering. Then you have to hit trees less. 